Hi, and welcome to the ADHD Friendly Podcast. I'm Patty Blenderman. I'm an ADHD coach and your host of all things ADHD Friendly. This is episode 19, and today I'm sharing some information on something called telephonophobia. Yes, it's a real thing. If getting on the phone is something you struggle with, I have a few ADHD friendly tips to support you to make phone calls with a bit more ease. I'm going to start today by just giving you an overview of what telephonophobia is, which I like saying, but it is a real thing and it's a challenge for a lot of us with ADHD brain wiring. So telephone phobia, also referred to as telephonophobia, is a reluctance or fear of making or taking phone calls. It's literally a fear of telephones. It's considered to be a type of social phobia or social anxiety. I am always wanting to highlight as an ADHD coach, I am not a medical provider. I am not at all supporting a diagnosis of any kind. Just want to give a little bit of context and information. If you just have a reluctance to get on the phone, um, especially with ADHD and impaired executive function skills, understanding what makes that challenging and some strategies to do it with a little bit more ease is really what I'm all about. So I'm going to dive into how we can do that with a little bit more ADHD friendly support. I have a quote I'm going to begin with, and I'm not quite sure who to attribute this to, but the quote is that there's no do-overs with a phone call. With texts and emails, you can start typing something and then you can back it up. When you get on the phone and you say something, it's out there. So it has a, a, a bit more skin in the game, if you will. I did a, a session on this about a year ago for one of my groups. And at that time, I pulled some information on this from a source online from verywell.com. And they had what they called a common hierarchy for telephone fears. And I'm going to just run this down um, for you guys. So number one, they say that calling a number that you know will only have a recorded message is typically the lowest level of resistance if making or receiving phone calls is challenging for you. Next, if you level that up a little bit, is calling a family member or a friend that you know well. So again, you might have some reluctance, but not as much reluctance as the next one. The next one is calling a business and asking a very straightforward question such as, can you tell me what time you closed tonight? A little bit more reluctance might come if you needed to call someone that you didn't know well, but you were still going to ask a simple question. Next in the list is calling someone that you don't know what know well about a complicated issue. So think about calling um, a business and or internet company, cell phone company, and you have to get on the phone with someone you don't know, and it's a complicated question about your service or your billing. Um, we typically have a lot of resistance around that kind of call. If you want to up the ante a little bit more than that, making any of the previous phone calls I described in front of one person. So if you think about making that call with somebody else in the room that can hear you making the call, do you notice if your reluctance goes up even more? And then the highest level of reluctance that we will often experience if this is a challenge for us is making any of the previous types of phone calls in front of a group of people. I read this list for the first time, like I said, about a year ago, and I was just blown away because I check every one of these boxes, but I have always, to this day, found it difficult to make phone calls in front of anyone, including my family members. I will take the phone and I will go into another room. Um, when I worked in an office, I would make calls from a conference room. It was very difficult for me to get on a phone and talk in front of someone else. So I've talked about some of the different types of phone calls that could create some reluctance. Now I want to talk about some strategies to make them a little bit easier to tolerate 
because there are often phone calls we need to make. They might be on your to-do list and be draining your energy as something you're tolerating on your list that you just can't seem to take the action, get it done and get it crossed off. So here are some strategies to maybe consider putting your back pocket as ways to explore, maybe run a little ADHD friendly experiment and see if it makes it a little bit easier to get one of those calls that you are resisting making get checked off your list. The first, and this, again, this list is from verywell.com. They say smile before making and receiving calls, just smiling. It builds up your positive energy and just, you know, it just puts you in this place of more confidence and positive and just creates a little bit more ease to make that phone call. Another suggestion would be to build in rewards. So after you're making a difficult call, how will you reward yourself for making that call? I do this very often where I'll, I'll kind of group my phone calls because I do find once I make one, I can take that momentum and keep going, but I will build in a, an incentive. My go-to is often like going and getting a milkshake. And for me, it needs to be something that I'm really looking forward to that has some real sparkle to it in order to support me to pull me into making the phone calls. The next is just to visualize yourself visually, literally picturing yourself feeling positive, how you're going to feel after you make the phone call. So picturing yourself being done and what that's going to look and feel like to you. The next strategy might be to determine availability. So if you're worried about interrupting somebody, maybe pausing and taking a minute to think about what would the best time to call be? Is it maybe during lunchtime or in the evening or waiting until the weekend? Identify that best time and then what prompt will you need to remind yourself that that's the time you decided to call? Maybe a calendar reminder, something that's going to bring it into your awareness at the time that you decided to make the call. Another strategy that I love, and I do this often with my own phone, phone calls, is don't overthink it. So the strategy is um, like three, two, one call or count down from five, five, four, three, two, one call. I'll often put the phone number in my cell phone. And then all I have to do is push the button to call and I'll just hit it. Once I push the button, I'll do three, two, one call. I'll just push the button. I'm already making the call. I'm not going to hang up. For me, that, that pushes me over the hurdle. So if I just enter the phone number and then I do three, two, one call and I just push the button, it just seems to magically make it easier for me to go ahead and do it. Instead of me thinking about making it, I just get my phone out and get it all set up and then push send. The next is maybe just prepare a little bit. Maybe generally think about what are you going to say? Maybe write down some talking points. Um, find dates that you're available if you're going to be scheduling an appointment. I, I'll do that where I'll kind of block time on my calendar in advance and I'll write them down. And that way when they start offering me times, I already know if it's a good time or not, or I have my calendar in front of me and I can easily look at it and make sure that it's a good time. Because I've noticed that a lot of my resistance comes from past experiences. And I've gotten on calls, on calls before where, let's say I'm calling the dentist to schedule an appointment and they'll offer me a time and I'll say yes. And I'll just say yes, because it feels so good to be done. I just want it and I'll write it down. But then when I go to put it in my calendar, I already have something at that time and I can't easily change it. And this has happened where I have to call them back and tell them that I actually can't make that time work. And that is for me harder than the initial call. So I won't make the call until I've identified times I'm available or have my calendar pulled up so I can easily find the time that they're offering and make sure that I am available for that appointment. The next would be um, another strategy could be to let a call if you have some reluctance to answering the call, let it go to your voicemail. I find I like to know what the person's calling about and then I can call them back. If I'm answering the call and I don't know what the call's about, it can create some stress that just gets in my way. But if I already know what the reason is you're calling, if I need to look anything up or prepare in any way, I can do that and call you back with more ease. Other options might be, is this a call you need to make? Maybe you can schedule an appointment online or can you send a person a text or ask them if you can talk in person or write an email? Sometimes we absolutely have to make a phone call, but if a phone call isn't the final option, what else could you do to get this checked off? Is there another way? So I'm going to just highlight 
some strategies with some examples here before we wrap up. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, calling from an open office space can be really uncomfortable. That could be among the most uncomfortable types of phone calls we have to make. So look for a quiet room, either an office that isn't being used, a conference room. Um, the beauty of having cell phones is we can maybe you know step out, take a couple minute break and go out to our car and call from the parking lot. Um, but just look for a quiet space where you can make your call. And for me, it was always important to make sure I'm not going to be overheard. So I had privacy. Identify the best time to make that call. So maybe making it early before other, other people come into the office, or if you have more energy in the morning, doing it when you're more easily able to tolerate making that call. And again, maybe writing down some bullet points for the call you need to make. So you're remembering the most important things that you need to say. If you're scheduling medical appointments, again, identifying in advance when you're available, have your medical insurance card handy. They always ask for the number, so just have it out so you're not scrambling and feeling that pressure in the moment. If you're calling about a billing error or any kind of problem with your service of some type, cable, cell phone, anything like that, have the bill in your site if you're calling about billing or an error and call when you have time to be on hold. I always find that the unknown for how long it's going to take will derail my plan to call. But if I have, let's say an hour to be able to tolerate sitting on hold for 30 minutes, hopefully I won't have to, but it gets me out of the problem of being on hold for 15 minutes and having to hang up because I only had 20 minutes for the call to begin with. So I look for a big enough chunk of time. If I know it tends to be a call that I have to wait on hold for a bit. And if I'm resisting a phone call with a friend or a family member, this can happen a lot too, especially if you have weak executive functions around planning and prioritizing around your time. You may have been meaning to make a call for a while and just haven't gotten around to it. Or, or, you know, I always say I'm thinking about it, but not at a time I can actually call. And the longer that goes on, it actually heightens my resistance. So it makes it harder for me to make that phone call. So sometimes I'll send a text first and I'll just say, you know, hey, I'm so sorry. You've been in my thoughts. I have a meeting, reach out to you. What's a good time for us to catch up? So then I'm calendaring it, getting it on the calendar. Another strategy that I use with this is having a repeat scheduled call. So let's say we talk the first Monday of every month during lunch. It just repeats on the calendar. We both see it. We know the plan. We can reschedule it if we need to, but we aren't always having to decide when we're going to make the call. So that makes sure that that happens with a bit more ease. So that's everything that I wanted to cover for this podcast on having some stress or some reluctance to make phone calls at this extreme called telephonophobia. I really sincerely appreciate your time, focus, and attention, and hope that some of these strategies around making phone calls with more ease will help you to explore some strategies that will work for you. And again, if you want to run an ADHD-friendly experiment with phone calls, identify what would make it a bit easier for you, and then a bit easier than that. Always looking for the ease to be able to lean into doing it more consistently. If you like this episode, please subscribe to my podcast and recommend it to a friend. If you're listening to this, I am also available on YouTube at ADHD Friendly Podcast. Until next time, tally ho.